Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for its and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the content that I provide. Uh, press that like button. It does help get the YouTube algorithm uh, to recognize uh, that this is uh, good content and uh, gets it up the charts, right? So uh, we're gonna start off um, on the week ahead and um, let's look at what's going on and what's potentially coming up. So the week ahead, the fourth quarter earnings season, so that's with the, uh, with the stocks and elsewhere, central banks in Japan. This is what we're focused on, um, Japan and so basically Japan will be deciding on monetary policy while the ECB European Central Bank will be publishing meeting minutes so that'll be important so again it's uh, it's looking at what the European Central Bank is saying about things like inflation and what they're going to do with regards to uh, the economy etc right and continuous potential monetary supports or reduction uh, and that is important because it has the effect of um, uh, increasing the value and appreciating a currency or devaluing a currency, right? So Canada, UK and Japan inflation data, China fourth quarter of GDP figures is also important uh, generally because if China's continuing to grow, then we should be more in a risk off um, uh, scenario, sorry, risk on scenario, I should say, um, and uh, Eurozone consumer confidence and Australia employment figures. So that's also going to be important as well for those uh, trading the Australian dollar. So um, a few market moving um, events potentially. So let's see what happens, but uh, let's get into the technicals and some more probably in-depth fundamentals. So let's look at the uh, the dollar index. And the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against a basket of currencies like the pound, uh, the euro and the yen, and uh, maybe a couple others as well. Um, now, uh, starting off on, a, on, I guess, a brand new fresh chart. And um, what we did have last week was a demand zone around here. And uh, prices have obviously gone through that, but my personal bias is for a potential buy. And um, for those of you who have uh, joined the course, you'll recognize this actually as a as a CPR zone, right? And we basically bounced off of that um, off of that CPR zone. Um, it's a level CPR, right? And the level really kind of started from here, right? It was right there. And in fact, I do talk about that in my uh, 2022 uh, market analysis, and uh, the uh, the link to that should be somewhere up at the top. And if you go back to that market analysis, you'll see that basically I was talking about the uh, um, this basically this this uh, I won't say necessarily setup because we're not looking to, um, to to trade the dollar index, but it's a it's a confluence, it's a level confluence that we use. Um, when buying the dollar and uh, looking to buy the dollar ultimately if this is the low and this is you know the high uh, what we're looking at is um, is is really understanding where we are from a value perspective this is obviously an expensive area for the dollar and this is you know a bargain area for the dollar right so um, if that's a bargain and if prices come back somewhere down to this zone potentially we could see some upside and why would we see upside price doesn't just move by itself it moves because of uh, the fundamentals in the uh, medium to long term short term is more to do with liquidity um, stop hunting market makers etc so let's get into why prices are potentially going to go higher on the dollar or why I think that anyway this is not financial advice but uh, the US inflation hasn't been this high since the early 80s so US inflation pressures show no sign of easing with headline CPI at now at 7% and core up at 5.5%. It hasn't been this high since the days of Thatcher and Reagan. Um, so some of you may not know uh, who they are, but uh, it's been a while. Um, uh, we uh, could be close to the peak, but uh, the risk is that inflation stays higher for longer and we could see a more aggressive response from the Fed. So an aggressive response, what does that mean? An aggressive response would be pretty much rate hikes, right? So the Fed will find it hard to talk about path ahead uh, after March rate hike. And 
generally rate hikes are positive and I say positive I don't want to use positive or negative but what um, rate hikes will typically do is they will appreciate a currency because inflation is devaluation so um, you have to uh, in order to counter inflation you have to try to uh, appreciate the currency and one of the ways to appreciate a currency is to hike rates so the federal reserve officials head towards their january meeting with only tentative conviction that inflation will finish the year below three percent because they have a two percent target as they predict and are ready uh, already saying that they may need to raise interest rates faster than expected so inflation is getting way out of hand way above their 2% target, which means that they are um, in a bit of a panic mode and they have to do something to stop the devaluation of the dollar, which is generally to try to appreciate their currency, right? So we've seen a pullback. And um, now for me, anyway, this looks like a, a bit of a buy, not necessarily on the dollar index, but on other currencies. So pullbacks are buying opportunities. If you understand that in you know the future, uh, at some point you know in the medium term, maybe the next uh, one to three months, prices should be you know a lot higher, right? If they're looking to high rate and on a hiking cycle. So let's move on to the dollar with that bias. Um, we're looking at really, you know, dollar buyers, right? So I'm not looking at supply zones, no way looking at supply zones, not for now. Uh, although I will plot supply zones just for those of you who may think that you want to be buyers, I mean, uh, sellers of the dollar and buyers of the Japanese yen. But there's a demand zone here and we also have um, a, bit of, a bit of an intraday support and resistance zone, which is gonna be around here. So uh, what are we at? right here why is that and that's really because you can kind of refine it a little bit you can you can generally see that prices have kind of bounced off that zone right from the underside and to the overside so you've got you know uh support there support there a bit of resistance around there so prices have come down bounced off this zone here and um we have several levels i guess within that demand zone um for me again if this is a bargain area and this is the uh the expensive area for the uh, dollar yen um anywhere below the 50 percent area which is fair value uh, is for me a nice buying opportunity. I haven't entered this just yet looking for an entry. Um, and if prices do come down a bit further, that's gonna be even nice uh, or nicer, if you wanna say nicer, uh, use that word, but um, it's gonna be a bit more of a bargain, right? Because there's a bargain down here. We know that for a fact as prices made uh, a new, a brand new high. So whatever drove prices higher, if they come back to this zone, fundamentally we wanna be a buyer of the dollar and a seller of the Japanese yen for fundamental reasons, uh, risk being more now uh, coming from probably more off to on, right? So in a risk-off environment, a Japanese yen does uh, is a safe haven and tends to want to strengthen. But I think with the Fed looking to high rates, the Omicron variant not doing, um, you know, not having a, a major effect or major impact, um, it's being kind of contained. I do think that uh, we should go to the upside. Now I don't know whether it's going to be this week, next week. Who knows, right? Nobody knows. No one knows. But the bias should be to the upside. And you can see pretty much fundamentally from the beginning of last year what's been happening fundamentally. So um, there's no reason to really kind of change the bias, right, of that. Um, not because prices are trending higher, but because of the fundamentals behind what is happening. And if you want to really apply fundamental analysis to your trading and uh, really get some uh, the results that you're looking for, then um, I literally am closing my uh, mentoring and enrollment closes on the 16th of January which at the time of this recording which is on a Saturday is one day four hours from now and um, uh, really applying fundamental analysis to your trading is essential how can you call yourself a forex trader if you have no idea about what drives the forex market what is important what to look for right banks are not they are not using technical analysis to make their trading decisions they are not you are a technical analysis trader and how is that working out for you right it's not working out very well so try fundamental analysis if you want if you're serious about this 
then you will use fundamental analysis, supply and demand zones, capture pain relief, stop hunts, as well as really understanding what goes on within the, uh, the, the Forex market in terms of market making, liquidity, as well as get access to our fundamental analysis spreadsheet, which is generally tend to steer us uh, in the right direction. So. Um, for those of you who are sitting on the fence at the moment and wondering if you should join or not, uh, give it a go because um, we've, uh, we've 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 got some great uh, results recently from the uh, for some traders and not just recently over the past uh, you know year or two. So um, again, we've got the. Um, let me just zoom down a little bit, I guess, uh, Forex mentoring interviews, and these are real people, real results, real experience. I've got Ken, Jarbred, Lawrence, Sam, Roger, John, and I've got some more interviews on the way with traders who are in the group, right? They are in this group and they are seeing the results with the fundamental analysis. So watch the interviews, give it a go, go to the website trading180.com and um, I'll see you on the other side. Anyways, getting back to the uh, the technicals and uh, let's now move on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss, I'm very interested. Prices have bounced up. I think I might have missed a bit of an entry, but I'll wait for a little bit of a pullback. The guys in the group, we were waiting for this zone, right? We've been waiting for this zone for ages for a bit of a pullback and prices have come back. I generally try not to take any uh, any trades on a Friday um, evening, right? On a Friday afternoon, Friday evening into the weekend, uh, personally. But um, we did see uh, prices come down into this zone on the daily. And um, I, we did, uh, I was saying about this setup here, but I think there are some traders that are actually in this trade here. And for me, I'm looking at uh, getting involved in this, just really kind of looking for a, a certain type of entry, to be fair. Um, but if it goes without me, then it goes without me. But if it doesn't, then brilliant. If it, and it pulls back, then I'm looking for really a, a setup somewhere around here. And some of you, again, in the group may recognize this. There's also a bit of a stop hunt. If prices come further down, then I'm looking at um, that zone right there. I think that's a very nice, fresh area of demand. And I think the dollar is an absolute bargain at this zone. I don't think um, it will come down there, but if it does, anything can happen. That is going to be an absolute bargain area to look for a buy. Uh, moving on. And again, this is not financial advice. So if you do want to um, get short, of course, on the um, on the uh, uh, dollar and buy at the Swiss franc for whatever reason, uh, then your nearest supply zone actually is going to be way up top. And um, I probably would say if you are looking to get involved in anywhere around that, um, around it within that, uh, that, that zone, again, break it down kind of thing where you've got a level of probably support and resistance. I'd probably say up the top, the 92s is probably the best area to look for any kind of short trades, probably up, up way up there. Um, Looking at the dollar CAD, not a pair that I'm personally interested in, but um, you know we we were looking at the forecasts in the uh, in the fundamental analysis group in the Discord group, and uh, this was pretty much predictive, right to the downside. The Canadian dollar is uh, looking to high crates also as long uh, along with the uh, U.S. dollar, but um, for me uh, again, I'm not really keen on this currency pair. Um, to trade so fundamentally it's not great and then you've got I think that's probably where you're really the way the demand zone is um, actually in fact I'll keep the other one there as well just in case you're looking to get uh, long or short you're looking at that area there uh, supply and then you're looking at probably something just slightly higher as well I think that zone that higher zone at the 128 area is actually quite nice so any long trades probably looking at right now if you're looking at getting short the underside of that zone is uh, pretty decent. Moving on to the pound dollar, and the pound now um, uh, has gone really from strength to strength. I kind of expected the pound to uh, get a bit weaker at, um, at here, and uh, actually it's continued to uh, go a bit higher. Reason being is because we had some positive news out of the UK, and the UK uh, 
UK growth surge takes GDP above pre-virus levels. So the UK economy reached its pre-virus level in November and early evidence suggests Omicron damage may be modest enough not to take activity back below. A February Bank of England rate hike is growing more likely. So the market is now pricing in, I guess, the likelihood of a um, of a, uh, a Bank of England interest rate hike. So um, you're seeing now pretty much what is going on with regards to uh, price now. Um, the dollar has been, you know, weak recently. It's not a pair again I'm interested in. You've got two, you know, quite strong currencies. Central banks are both hiking. Um, it's more of a difficult market to read, to be fair, and price to predict where prices are going to go. It's almost like um, if you compare maybe two, you know, really, you know, strong, uh, I don't know, boxers, for example, in a straight fight, it's harder to uh, to predict who's going to win, right? Whereas if you have two currencies where one is uh, central bank is looking to uh, appreciate their currency through rate hikes and another country is not, and the central bank is not, then that's, an, that's a much easier trade to take um, and predict, right, where prices are going to go in the medium to long term. But um, for me, um, you know, it's not really a pair that I'm looking to take, take but if you are looking to, you know, continue buying the pound against the dollar the first area to look for is that zone there and you actually do have uh, some decent confluence in that area uh, with some, some horizontal support also as well from the uh, from a sell trade perspective um, this area has is, is quite decent when I think about um, the fact that this this price action really hasn't pulled back and is always due a pullback there's always a reversion to the mean um, so with that being said, I think if the pound starts to get a bit stronger, the pound, sorry, the dollar starts to get a bit stronger, um, and, um, you know, as towards closer to a rate hike, then you may start to see at least a pullback. Markets have to pull back, right? They're moving waves. So even though we might go higher, you probably get maybe deep pullbacks within that move higher. And I do think that prices will start to come, you know, pull back at some point where they have to, but, so uh, it's not really a pair that I'm interested in taking. But, but what is, is the euro dollar and the euro dollar, um, you know, we're uh, looking at trades within this area here, supply zone. And uh, the reason why I'm looking at supply zones is because uh, Europe aren't looking to hike rates anytime soon. And if you uh, look at, for example, the Germany economy shrank as much as 1% in the final quarter of 2021. So gross domestic product rose 2.7% in a full year as expected, but the recovery from the pandemic uh, has fallen uh, behind France, Italy and Spain. And the reason why that's important is because of the fact that Germany is Europe's powerhouse, right? If German, if, if the German economy is lagging behind, then it, it doesn't, um, it's not great for, for, for Europe, right? But uh, we had some hidden uh, supply here um, and uh, prices have literally reacted from that zone and uh, you know, go into the downside. So um, really nice uh, trade setup there. I'm looking at anywhere, probably just you know beyond that zone as well. Um, I think if the I think the limit of the move is probably around the 115s, somewhere like that. We've seen some bank forecasts that say around 115. So the higher it comes, I think the uh, the more uh, the cheaper it is for the uh, for the dollar. And as we get closer to rate hikes, we should see prices start to come down prices could you know could you know continue going higher that's that's that is what it is but i think the path for these resistance especially if you look at again not looking at you know saying that the reason why you know we've been going down is because of price but price has to pull back right there could be a decent pullback and a continuation to the downside so fundamentally um you know right now dollar is uh, is 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 in the driving seat when it comes to which currency is being appreciated and which currency is uh, and which central bank is kind of holding fire and looking to uh, appreciate their currency. So for now, uh, you know, dollar pretty much dollar shorts or dollar buys, which is a euro dollar short. If you are looking to buy the euro, then the nearest area that you want to look for is going to be at this 113, uh, 113.6 area. Moving on to the Aussie dollar and the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie dollar came up to this zone right here. Nice supply zone. Touched it once, touched it twice, 
gave a nice little pin bar. I think there was like a nice little zone above it. Did it touch that? Nope, didn't touch it. But <clears throat> that zone ended up holding the one below. So um, again, looking at this area here, uh, this is a decent short and then there was a nice little uh, short here as well. Again, the Australian dollar, um, there are central bank meetings on the horizon. The Australian dollar might be a buy at some point, probably later in the year, but uh, or maybe earlier, matter of fact, it depends on what the um, the data says. But I think um, against the, uh, the, the US dollar at the moment, I think this is just a pullback, right? Again, the markets have to pull back. So you've had this move, which hasn't really pulled back at all. It's gone from like 75.5 to like 70. So it's got, sorry, it's gone around about 5 hundred pips and um, again if between an expensive and uh, a cheap area is fair value so what the price do it just pull back to fair value right so the banks they want to buy the uh, this this currency pair as far as the US dollar against the Australian dollar they were looking at fair value cheaper and then potentially to the downside now again it just depends on um, the Australian dollar and, and, and the uh, central bank, but you would think that the uh, path of least resistance should be to the downside, not a pair I'm interested in uh, personally, but if you are, then uh, you should probably, uh, again, not financial advice either, but the path of least resistance does look like it is to the downside because the US dollar is, and the Federal Reserve are ahead of the bank, uh, Reserve Bank of Australia. And now looking at the gold, looking at gold and gold, um, uh, for me, uh, it's been a very tricky trade. Not to say I've been trading gold, but if I were trading gold, it's um, tricky in a sense of it's not reacting fundamentally as it as it typically should, right? As it normally does, and um, and so uh, for that reason, you would expect really gold to you know start making really you know higher highs when you see high inflation, right? should be really up here because gold is a hedge against inflation, but we've seen um, dollar strength. Um, you know, counteract that. We've also, well, you know, in 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 over the past, you know, uh, year or so, but we've also um, uh, seen that uh, money might, you know, flow or money's been flowing into, for example, bonds, which you know return a yield, right? Government bonds. So, with that being said, um, gold bulls at the moment uh, struggling a little bit. I think gold is a buy if the U.S. Um, economy starts to. Um, starts to fade a little bit um, and maybe the uh, you know there's there's maybe some lockdowns and uh, some risk off sentiment that comes into play but for now I do think that gold isn't necessarily uh, a fantastic buy even from a location perspective if we're looking at this being the absolute high and maybe this being the recent you know lows um, we're in a bit of no man's land a bit of fair value so you really want to buy at highs and lows so really up here if you're looking to short if you're looking to buy it's probably down at those lows or even zooming out a bit you probably want to even look for um, you know these lows around here so within that range I think the ultimate buying gold for me is prices really kind of came back down to this area here and then you know, there might be a decent stop hunt around that level, etc. But um, where we are now, uh, probably a, a definitely a bit more tricky to uh, to really kind of see where gold may want to go in the future or where the, you know the, the real kind of bargains are. But um, if you're a gold bug, um, then gold is always going to be a buy regardless of you know uh, where what prices are doing in the uh, in the short term, right? Um, so that's where we are. Um, and that brings us to the end of this week's uh, fundamental and uh, technical analysis. Um, again, I wish you a great trading week. The uh, mentoring um, uh, enrollment does end uh, on Sunday the 16th. And uh, once it's gone, um, I will maybe reopen within the next uh, three, four, five months. Depends on how I really kind of feel, right? So, um for those of you who are on the fence, have a watch of the interviews. Uh, lots of traders giving you giving you their personal experience and how I've helped them uh, to really become profitable. So, uh, so guys, take care and have a great trading week. And hopefully, I'll be working with you in the group at some point. Uh, take care and speak to you all soon.